alluded to some of the causations of these crashes. There seems to be an element of not all within our control. Pedestrians under the influence of drink or drugs. Uh, there were two incidents that were recorded in 2011. And that increased it to, two, uh, to 10 in 2014. And that's 23%. It's over a fifth of all our pedestrian care sites. In 2015, Still just a pedestrian care sites for pedestrian things under the influence of most of the alcohol. There is, over the last five years, an overall continuing decrease in the number of children killed or seriously injured on our roads. This is good news. An increment in our analysis, somewhat unusual as I come to the report. There were six children who were under four years old who were in the supervision of an adult. <coughs> it's unlikely that we would develop many measures that would resolve some of those issues. Uh, inappropriate speed is not being raised by the In Table 1, I've detailed the broad classes that we had for all the pedestrian death and serious injuries in 2015. Um, and a number of those, six involved pedestrians walking the wrong out into vehicles, six involved pedestrians on the influence of alcohol. <coughs> Thank you.
strategy of more things that they're doing and contrasted the numbers that understand all the measures that will actually be. We are doing a lot for a lot of people and not a lot of reason. Those measures are being delivered. Um, comparing where we are for pedestrian uh, casualties, different local authority areas have different styles of to the World Pedestrian Association report, which has been written principally by we acknowledge that he has used a variety of sources of groups to read to, and his report, I've brought into it some numbers, it's actually 
Could you speak up just a little Sorry. bit, please? Thank you. The offset report um, goes back to 2008 offset examined with all the PLC uh, and refers back to data that was uh, available then to them in 2005. So it's quite some time uh, spent there. At that time, there were 37 childcare sites.
I thought the way we've done the format, Chris, we, we've got Dave to come forward, <coughs> present his report, because that's presented in, in, the, um, in tonight's business. And then after we've finished asking the questions, I'm then going to invite, there's a police officer here, and there's the treasurer of the Will Pedestrian Association, and I'm going to invite both of them to come forward, and then we can, we can ask um, the Pedestrian Association treasurer, um, Victoria Jordan, says she'd like to make a brief statement, and then we can ask them questions as well. Okay, thank you, Chair. Mr. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for the comprehensive report. It is comprehensive. Uh, however, as with all these things, there does seem to be some, I'm not going to say discrepancies, because discrepancies are on the way, uh, some questions and challenges. And one of the first thing I have to ask is, you, know, you, you said yourself that, you know, when you get information about an area that's potentially dangerous, that's where the, the, the funding will go. So is it fair to say that the council has reacted, but not proactive?
that the three councillors are now paying £400 for that traffic survey. Because we do have real concerns. So we are being proactive, but we shouldn't have to come up with that cash. That's the responsibility of this council. Road safety is a statutory duty, says on here. So would you like to answer that? Um, I think using the funds uh, available surveys, it would be nice to have a huge pot of money to do surveys as and when. That's not easily uh, forthcoming these days. I think we've all seen reductions in plans. Looking at the data that we've got, we can uh, often prioritise where those kind of measures should be overtaken uh, and surveys uh, undertaken. Uh, I think in the case without wanting to drift off into specifics here, in that particular Somebody somewhere today had done a little whitewashing job on this council report. I'm going to blame Mark Smith because he's probably signed his off, has he? Oh, he didn't sign his off. Oh, wait, well, we'll come back later, Mark. I'm sure he's a big head. But, I mean, I think in a way. Of course, in my name, Chair. Oh, don't you sign these things off, Mark? Through you, Chair. The cover report is in my name, so for my report, I'll definitely sign it off. Oh, that's right. Well, then it's, I'm blaming you then. So what I'm yeah. saying is, but they, I've got to tell you that I've got a deal of sympathy with the President's Association. I think they do a fantastic job. A bit, bit overzealous at times, but generally good. But I think some of the things you've said are a bit, very much washing over the important points that I make. And there's a couple of things in your report. Um, you said in, on page, we're talking about page 13 of um, Sessions report talking about shop displays and angles. Now you said that you have nobody complaining about angles in in recently. Well I've sent at least three emails to Street Safe about angles something out in places and all that kind of else over the last year or eighteen months. So don't you isn't there a line of is there a link with it? Don't you know what we send emails to street scene. Don't, doesn't it come through you? Don't you get involved in it? Um, Councillor, I was specific in paragraph 5.11 of my report, which although marks and the signs of the report, these are my words. The council's got no records when I checked of claims arising from Nor have I got any road safety issues, faculty data, or otherwise, 
So, on, in, in relation to that, the, there's a report on page 813 of their report that, oh, that um, shot displays in more than this measure, so more to more gas is here. And these people are genuine people, I'm sure, who have got points to make. Now, you said in your report that Mark Smith has written to one of us and threatened him with legal action, presumably because he's making, expressing concerns. So, well, Mark, Mark might answer this himself, but you, you presented the point to us. Why has Mark Smith threatened a resident in Morton with legal action? Because he's been complaining about eight boards on the pavement in the shop. Hang on a second. Sorry, good job. Well, I'm hoping to get an answer. Jerry, can I just say that we're here to discuss pedestrian casualties. The report from the Pedestrian Association, the report from um, the technical services headed by Mark Smith and Dave's our road manager. This really isn't the forum. Dave's already said that there's no recorded accidents or deaths as a result of A boards on, on pavements. So this really isn't the, isn't the forum to be discussing a board. Where is the forum? And whether the, whether Mark threatened somebody with legal action, I mean, this really is not the forum for that, Jerry. I'd like to know what, where the forum is, I guess. We can ask you, you can talk about that. You can bring that up with your spokesperson. Like in general, agenda setting meeting. Like in general concerns, why would an officer, a senior officer, well, that, that's something for another time, I think, not tonight, Jerry, if you don't mind me saying. Well, I'm very disappointed with that. Really. Well, we can, we can discuss it as, we can certainly discuss it <coughs> as a committee. Okay. Is there, is there anything else you, pertaining or appertaining to road safety and pedestrian casualties which we're here tonight to discuss? Is there anything else you'd like to well, say before we move to someone else? Car, there would be a pedestrian uh, casualty if somebody fell over an eight ball. Yeah, so I'm not, sure we should be talking about it. Jerry, I don't want it to become a discussion between you and I, but the, the figures show that nobody has fallen over an eight ball. That's the point that, that Dave did make as the road safety manager. Nobody has. But I'll, I'll move on to somebody else now. Um, Gene. Um, I've got a question for Dave, if you both As Councillor Blakey has raised the planning application for Solar and Massey, I'd just like to um, send down a member of the Fire Authority, which has put that planning application in, just in that in case it needs to be registered as an interest. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, my question, well, it's an observation really, Dave. Thanks very much for your uh, really comprehensive report. But one thing that hasn't been highlighted in the um, was the use of people who are pedestrians walking along using reading their smartphones. I see this almost every single day and I've actually seen women with like, one hand on a pram while they're reading and they're walking along and even crossing a junction. Now the pram and the baby are going to be hit first if there's something there. Is, is that an issue? Has that been raised anywhere else?
landlord and maintenance there uh, repairing the parking. As you probably know, Mark, there's a few people in this room who have been involved in that for, for many years. And in fact, I think I ought to get some commission for this because one of the photographs actually in, in Campbell's report is on my phone. So I ought to get commission for that. Um, the point I think that's important is that we've all looked at this in enormous amount of detail. I know Dave and Ruth and I have discussed it on many occasions, and there are other people in this room who have also reviewed it. And we did have an initiative a few years ago where we got uh, Alice Smith involved and, uh, um, running a, a photographic campaign in the newspapers to point out the fact that it was very, very hard for people with mobility problems, particularly with scooters or with um, pedestrian uh, children or whatever, uh, when the pavements were not just obstructed but totally blocked. Now, as some of you will know, I have an electric mobility scooter, which I don't really use full time, I can manage to walk with a stick occasionally. But there are areas in this borough, particularly in West Kirby, where I'm quite often forced to go right in the middle of Bank Road, which is a busy road, to get around some idiot who's parked his van fully across the pavement. And my question, very simply, without elaborating on it too far, Michael, is the fact that we did have a system lined up about four years ago, and we did produce those little leaflets, which a lot of you may have seen, but basically it was produced in coordination with the police, the police and World Border Council, and David and I, and in fact, Ian Campbell was also involved. And between us, we got a document like that worded, which was, uh, and the idea was to put it on people's windscreen wipers, drawing attention to the fact that they were causing obstruction, that what they were doing was actually illegal, that notice would be taken of that particular event, and that if they were to repeat